and welcome to our super quick video. We're going to introduce biochemistry here today. Our guiding questions, what are the relationships between hydrolysis and condensation reactions, and how can polymerization result in immersion properties? We are going to describe briefly the chemistry of carbon. We're going to define monomers and polymers. We're going to compare and contrast catabolism and anabolism. We're going to wrap up with a look at metabolism. Carbon is an essential element for biochemistry and organic chemistry. It's the 15th most abundant element on Earth. It's really good at making covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are bonds that are being um, in which el electrons are being shared between atoms. Carbon's really good at making covalent bonds because it has four valence electrons. Remember that valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level of the atom. So carbon has a total of six electrons, but the first two are here in this inner energy level, and then these one, two, three, four, and the outermost energy level, these are our valence electrons. They're super important because our valence electrons are the ones that are most often in our bonds. Carbon makes lots of bonds um, because it has those four valence electrons. It needs to make four bonds to get to what we call the octet rule, or eight is great. Atoms are most stable when they have a full valence energy level, eight electrons makes the, that energy level full. So carbon already has four, it needs four more to get to eight. It does that by sharing lots of electrons. It can share with other carbon atoms. We can actually make crazy long chains of carbons. That's called catenation. Carbon can also share with other elements. And so it's super versatile and allows us to have all of the variety of molecules that we need to be alive. Here are some examples of carbon molecules. Notice here, I've got a carbon and I've got a carbon. This carbon clearly has one, two, three, four bonds. Each one of these bonds represents a pair of shared electrons. So there's two and there's four and there's six and there's eight. This carbon has eight valence electrons now that it's sharing some and that makes it quite stable. You might be thinking this carbon only has one to three bonds, but this bond is actually a double bond, which means that there are two pairs of electrons being shared here. So with this shared pair and a pair here with oxygen, and then these two pairs, this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons in the outermost energy level, it is quite stable. This molecule happens to be ethanoic acid, also known as acetic acid, and this is the molecule that's found in vinegar. These two molecules here, these crazy, crazy long chains of carbon, um, are fatty acids. We have a saturated fatty acid here. There are no double bonds between any of those carbons. That's what makes it saturated. Notice that each one of those carbons has one, two, three, four bonds, and therefore all those carbons are quite stable. In the unsaturated fatty acid here, a couple of these carbons have a double bond between them. When we make this double bond, we have to take out the hydrogen that used to be here. The hydrogen that's here isn't here because that would give carbon one, two, three, four, five bonds or 10, two, four, six, eight, 10 electrons. That's too many. And so this hydrogen is removed. And this is why we call it unsaturated because we pulled some of those hydrogens out of the molecule. These molecules, these fatty acids, are really good at storing energy in a long-term kind of fashion. One more, and you might be wondering, why is that molecule on the screen? There aren't even any carbons in it. We have sometimes in biochemistry and organic chemistry, pictures of molecules called Hayworth projections. In our Hayworth projections, just to make the molecule a little bit less messy, we don't draw the hydrogens or the carbons. Each one of these vertices is a carbon. Each one of these is a carbon. So we've got lots and lots and lots of carbons rolling around in here. You might notice that this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds with that double bond, two, four, six, eight pairs, not, sorry, not eight pairs, eight total electrons, two, four, six, eight shared electrons. So this carbon is stable. You might be wondering about this guy though. He only has one, two, three, that's not enough. There is, just like we didn't draw the carbons, we also don't draw the hydrogens. We can assume that there must be a hydrogen here to get this carbon to its valence of eight. 
This molecule is called triclosan. Triclosan is a really good antibacterial, antifungal agent that we put into soap and toothpaste, but we might be finding some health concerns right now. So it is considered a regulated molecule, not quite banned, but we're regulating it until we can figure out how much harm it is actually causing. Two of the most common processes that we carry out with our carbon and other molecules are polymerization and then the digestion of those polymers. When we eat our food, many of our food molecules are polymers, crazy big long chains of pieces that are glued together. Starch is a polymer of lots of glucose molecules. Um, proteins are polymers of lots of amino acids. When we eat those proteins or those starches, our bodies break those polymers down into dimers, which is two, or into monomers, which are just those one little pieces. And then our bodies take those monomers, those dimers, and we start to glue them back together the way that we want them glued together into trimers, which is three, tetramers, tetra is four, or into polymers, which is just big. Catabolism is when we take those big food molecules and we digest them or break them down into smaller pieces. When these big molecules are digested or broken down, energy is released. We call this kind of reaction an exergonic reaction. That's what this potential energy profile diagram is showing us. The reactants, this big chunk, has a bunch of energy stored in its chemical bonds. When we digest it, we have to add a little bit of energy to get that breaking down process started. And then all of this is the energy that is released. So lots of energy is released during catabolism when we break these molecules down into smaller pieces. When we go from polymer to monomer, and we call the chemical reactions that make this happen hydrolysis reactions. We're going to look at hydrolysis reactions in a couple of slides. The opposite of catabolism is anabolism. When we take those tiny little pieces that resulted from digestion and we build them into the bigger molecules, the polymers that we want in our bodies, this is anabolism, the synthesis of bigger molecules or building up those polymers. This does require energy. We have to add energy to make it happen. We call these reactions endergonic as opposed to the exergonic in the previous slide. Those reactants, these little pieces here are starting with just a little bit of energy stored in their bonds. We're going to add a bunch of energy to get these molecules to stick together to make our polymer and then our product ends up with more energy stored in its chemical bonds than the original molecules had. This is endergonic, we're storing energy in those chemical bonds between those monomers. The chemical reaction that makes this happen is known as a condensation reaction, and we're gonna look at that on the next slide. Here is that condensation reaction that I was just mentioning. Condensation, again, is when we are building up or synthesizing larger polymers from our monomers. This is an example of anabolism. Anabolism is building up. How condensation reactions happens is so amazing. So here is one amino acid. Here's another amino acid. We're gonna make a dipeptide, which is a tiny little piece of protein. How we do that is we take this OH group off of one amino acid, and we take this hydrogen off of another amino acid, the one that's right next to it. This hydrogen and this hydrogen make two hydrogens plus an oxygen two H's and an O, that's water. The reason that we call this chemical reaction condensation is we are literally pulling water molecules out from between these two monomers, these two amino acids that we're using to build our protein. Sometimes in AP chemistry world or in AP biology world, instead of calling it condensation, we call it dehydration synthesis. It's the same thing, there's just different names, condensation in IB world, dehydration synthesis outside IB world, same thing though. Again, we're going to take an OH group off of one molecule, this hydrogen off of the other, they get squished together and we end up with two H's and an O, that's water. But remember that carbon needs four bonds. And if I take this guy off, this carbon now only has one, two, three. Nitrogen is kind of quirky, it needs three bonds, but if I take that hydrogen off, it only has one, two. And so those two guys find each other. 
just like that to make that last bond that they both need. Carbon now has one, two, three, four bonds, and nitrogen has the two that it needs to be stable. And voila, we have a chemical bond formed between these two monomers to make this dimer. This is condensation. The opposite of condensation is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis or hydrolysis, now we're using water, that's the hydro part, to split apart molecules, that's the lysis part. This molecule is a disaccharide, it's two pieces of sugars stuck together, it's sucrose. This is table sugar. The sugar that we add um, when we're cooking stuff, when we're baking cookies, it is sucrose. Sucrose is composed of two little pieces, monomers of sugars known as glucose and fructose. If I want to split that sucrose down into glucose and fructose pieces, I'm going to add the water. That's the hydro part of hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Just like in our catabolism example in the previous page, we're going to think about that H and an O and an H. We're going to chunk one of the H's off of the water and it's going to stick to that O right there. And that's going to be this piece of glucose. This OH is going to stick onto this carbon right here. And that's this OH here on fructose. So we're going to split the water apart. We're going to use an H and we're going to stick it onto one piece. OH stuck onto the other piece and that is going to sever that chemical bond right there so that we have two separate pieces instead of one big piece. Let's practice naming that reaction. So is this hydrolysis or is it condensation? Is it catabolism or is it anabolism? Notice that I have two small molecules and I'm making a bigger one. If I'm building things up, that is anabolism. I'm using one hydrogen here and the hydroxide group here, OH is hydroxyl. We're going to combine those together to make our water. We're pulling water out from between these two molecules. That makes this condensation. We have a condensation reaction and that's anabolism. We're building up bigger molecules from smaller ones. How about this? Notice that I have a dipeptide and we're cleaving the dipeptide. We're adding some water. Proteases are enzymes that help us carry out these chemical reactions. And then this chunk is now separate from this chunk. Those pieces of water are here and here and here and here. This is going to definitely catabolism. We are breaking down a big molecule into smaller pieces. And this reaction is hydrolysis. Lysis is the splitting. We used water. That's the hydro part. Metabolism is the sum of all enzyme catalyzed reactions in a system. All the chemical reactions in a system, which means that it is going to be the sum of anabolism and catabolism. We eat the food, we break it down, we use those little pieces to build up our own bodies. We take catabolism and anabolism together and that is metabolism and it's super complex. Here's a small map of one small thing that happens in the liver, crazy sauce. And we did it, my friends. We talked about relationships between hydrolysis and condensation reactions. Polymerization, building up those big molecules, means that those molecules can be different from their tiny pieces. We described the chemistry of carbon. It has four valence electrons, which means that it needs four bonds, and it makes those bonds in so many ways. Monomers are tiny little pieces. Polymers are big pieces. Those big pieces are formed in anabolic reactions. We chop those big pieces down into their monomers in catabolic reactions. And metabolism is the sum of all of that. Good work today.